let's, uh, as always, let's, let's talk to the Lord first. Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, I pray as we come before you and we study your word today, that you would make our hearts uh, fertile to receive your word. Uh, and Lord, help us to apply it to our lives and to see how this commandment applies to us and how we can teach it to others, Lord, by the way that we live. Um, thank you, dear God, for this time together and thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and your grace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's talk about honor marriage. Honor marriage. We're going to be looking at Exodus 20 and 14, as well as 2 Samuel 11, 1 through 5. And as always, we'll talk about the commandment first, and then there's a narrative that goes along with it, a good one, uh, that we find in 2 Samuel 11. I said last week, two weeks before we talked about it, but it's, it's this week uh, that we will cover that. Uh, let me ask you a, a question. Uh, when you think of marriage and you think of as always a couple, uh, talk to the Lord first. is there a couple that, that inspires you in, in your marriage, uh, and and as as a result of that, uh, okay. I mean, this this yeah. commandment ought to be eliminated. Well, I don't think God's going to go along with that. How about you? Uh, I'm, I'm sure Amen. you agree with me. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons that he believed that because he looks at us like we're just like another animal and and there's some things there's some illustrations i'm going to give us some things that i'm going to say because uh, when we're talking about adultery saints we're talking about sex all right and so this is this is uh, it's not r-rated but definitely going to be pg all right uh but uh, he's saying that it's not natural for a man just to crave one woman and and that we're just like the animals well, we're not just like the animals and it's be, the reason we're not is because we are made in God's image. Mm -hmm. we're, we're made in his image. And animals, there's no other animal. That, there's, there's nothing that was created that is like us. Uh, because man, it, there, there are three, three parts to a man. Uh, uh, a man uh, definitely has a body. He has a soul. And uh, he also has a spirit. Our dogs don't have a spirit. Mm -hmm. They cannot communicate with God like we can communicate with God. Um, uh, we are made in the image of God. There's nothing else the Bible teaches us that we're, we're made in the image of God. I, uh, uh, our scripture today is, is again, uh, Exodus 20 and 14. And this was a symbol that I gave you for that. And remember, I crossed these two together. So this is the seventh commandment. That's how you can remember each one of the commandments. And the reason I cross these two fingers together on this hand is because this represents the children. This represents a man and a woman, and they become one. They're one flesh, saints, is, is, is what they are. That's, that's the way God created us and, and when he made marriage. Go okay. ahead. Um, and, 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 and so um, uh, he said, do not commit adultery. I, I want to go to another scripture. It's not a part of our country. And I'll, I'll read it uh, to you. Um, and if you want to follow along in your Bible, turn to Proverbs 6 chapter. Proverbs 6. And I'm going to be reading verses 23 through 32. And this is Solomon, a man that uh, um, he had a lot of wives, 700 as a matter of fact, in the Bible. 
and there's 300 concubines. And he's teaching his son, and he's teaching his son to do something that he didn't do uh, and that he was not good at, nor was his father, as we'll, as we'll learn. Uh, and, and so he's giving him warnings against adultery. And I'll start reading uh, with verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life, to preserve you from, e from the evil woman, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. Do not desire her beauty in your heart and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. For the price of a prostitute is only a loaf of bread, but a married woman hunts down a precious life. Can a man marry fire? Can a man carry fire next to his chest and his clothes not be burned? Or can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorched? So is he who goes to his neighbor's wife None who touches her will go unpunished. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite when he is hungry. But if he is caught, he will pay sevenfold. He will give all the goods of his house. He who commits adultery lacks sense. He who does, it destroys himself. Saints, it's not a matter. It's not a matter of not getting an STD. It's, it's not a matter of practicing safe sex. That, that's, that's not what God is talking about. What, what God says is that when I commit adultery, I'm destroying myself. I'm destroying my own soul. And so that's, that's, that's what this is a matter of. That's why God says it. it's just like, and what good father or mother would see their child doing something or the potential of them doing something. You know, we've done it with our children. Say, hey, stay out of the street. Don't run into the street. Well, when God has given this commandment, it's, it, it is a, it's, I, I know it's in the negative, but it's to help us to have a positive life. Uh, and so he says, thou, that, do not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Um, and, and but the world doesn't see it that way. And the way that they view sex is that it's two two ways that they view it. Uh, they view it as recreation and procreation. They they limit it there, but that's not how the Bible put it. The Bible goes further than that. The Bible says yes, God created it for recreation. <laughs> Amen. It, 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 it's a good thing within the bounds of marriage. Amen. Amen. Um, it, it, uh, it, it is definitely for procreation. That's how we're going to continue uh, in, in life uh, uh, as, we, uh, as we, our seed, uh, and our seed has, uh, has seed. Uh, so it's, it's for that, but what God created it for also is for unification. When you read uh, Genesis, the first chapter, and in that first chapter, it talks about him creating man and woman. He created them, and, and, and he talks about them being one flesh, one flesh. One of the purposes of, uh, you know, a, a marriage is consummated, through sex, amen? Mm -hmm. A man and a woman, it, it, uh, marriage is consummated. They become one. God made it that way. He set it up that way. And what a great thing that he did. Can I give it amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> as long as we do it within, the, right. according to the boundaries that he sets. You know, it's uh, they're in the baseball playoffs right now. They have... Uh, They've got five lines, right? Mm -hmm. As long as you get the ball within the five lines, yeah. and 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 it's a hit, that's okay. Uh, but if you knock it over the fence and it's outside the five lines, and that's a foul. If you run out of bounds, uh, you know, the, the, one of the touchdowns that OU got last night in that loss, <laughs> they, they they took it to the uh, they took it 
they, they had to look at it. And, and, and yes, they said he touched down in bounds before yeah. he went out of bounds in the end zone. Uh, and, and, and the same is true for us spiritually and as it relates to marriage. Uh, when 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 we are married, we got to stay in the bounds of mm -hmm. marriage. Otherwise, you are uh, violating God's law. I want you to look at Proverbs five. Proverbs five, and uh, again about uh, our brother Solomon. And we're just going to kind of walk uh, through this. As, as we talk about adultery, um, because the Bible has plenty to say about it. Uh, and uh, again, uh, he has plenty of experience. Somebody said that experience is the best teacher. Uh, it's the best teacher, but you don't have to experience everything to be taught. Yeah. We ought to learn from the mistakes <laughs> of others, right? Yeah. And so we can learn from Solomon. I go. I'll take you back to First Corinthians ten. I'll refer to it maybe more than one time. In First Corinthians ten, uh, that scripture says uh, that that these things were written before uh, for time for our learning, so that we could learn from them, so that we don't have to make the same mistakes. And Solomon is writing to his son because he doesn't want him to make the, the same mistakes that he, he did. He did. Mm -hmm. Because when you have sex outside of marriage, whether it's I'm, I'm married and I'm having sex with somebody else outside of my wife, or if, it, if it's fornication before I get married, it's, it is, uh, and this is why the world doesn't like this, what, you know, what what we're learning today. If, if, if I'm just living with somebody, and that's very popular today, it's very popular among our young people. You gotta try it before you buy it. I even <laughs> heard that when I was growing up. I know you did too. Amen. Mm. Uh, but but uh, that, is, that is not what God teaches. Uh, I'm gonna show you something. Y'all know what this is. The onion. onion? This is an onion. And, and we used to have an expression when I was growing up, I'm going to get me a piece. <laughs> Girl, this is PG. Amen? All right. Y'all know, know I'm right. Y'all said it too. Amen? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you know what happens when you, when you tear off this onion and, and you just tear off a piece at a time? Pretty soon it's going to be gone. But in the process... You're going to shed some tears. <laughs> and there's a lot of people in tears because they have right. not gone according to what God says in his word. Amen. Yes. And they are shedding tears. Have you ever shed any tears? Don't answer that loud. Amen. Amen. Uh, and, and, and so what Solomon is doing is he's giving some danger signs to his son. Even the world recognizes that this is a problem. 9-11 uh, was a terrible thing. And one of the reasons it was a terrible thing is because there are many children that did not have their mother and their father come home that night. Mm -hmm. And they would not be with them. Let me tell you something that's worse than 9-11. It's adultery. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many children many, many, millions of children. Those are thousands, and that was terrible. The, 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 their mother or father did not come home. But there are millions because their mother and father do not come home because of the sin of adultery. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're people that never knew their father, uh, unfortunately, uh, because of the sin. So it's a dangerous sin. Um, it is something that is promoted in our society. Let me tell you how. I, I was, I, what's that show that you watch all the time? I'm not trying to push you on the spot. Something about married. Married at first sight. Married at first sight. Oh. <laughs> I just went by the TV to watch that. <laughs> now I didn't watch it. 
I, I just saw and, and, and there are and there, there are millions of Christians. There are things that they are teaching in that that are so anti-God, it ain't even funny. Mm -hmm. uh, because they have no regard for what I'm talking about here. They, they believe in try it before you buy it. Amen. All right. There is no commitment to marriage because they look at it like some civil matter. And it's not civil. It is a covenant relationship that I have with Audrey Jeanette Jones. Amen. Right. It's a covenant right. relationship that I have with her. And I don't I not only have it with her, but I have it with God as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 he, he's a part of that covenant. Uh, soap operas. There's a formula to soap operas. And it's not just soap operas now. It's a lot of our television shows. Mm -hmm. They believe that you've got to have either an implication of a sex scene or a sex scene to every 30 minutes in order to keep our attention. So they got this thing figured out. Amen. When I said figured out, it's the opposite of what God says. And all what they appeal to is our lust. And we cling to it because we go after it. Because it, 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 what it does, it creates lust. And it creates lust within us. Don't believe me? Believe Jesus. I want you to turn in your Bibles and somebody read it for me this time. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 27 through 30. And let's look at what Jesus had to say to us. Matthew 5, verses 27 through 30. First one to find it, just start reading. You have heard that it, it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whosoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you. For it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. 30. Mm -hmm. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. For it's more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into the lake, into the into hell. Once again, Jesus raises the commandments to a higher level. Yes, Jesus. And 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 this is him speaking on the Sermon on the Mount, and he's saying that I can commit adultery. With these. Amen. And we'll talk about that again whenever we talk about David in a few minutes in, 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 in this example. Uh, you know, we're, we're in, in that scripture about him in Second uh, Samuel, uh, the 11th chapter. Uh, because what, what our eyes can do, it can make us dissatisfied with what we have. We'll want what somebody else has. That's that's envy, but also with lust, and and that's why they do what they do on television. They want you to lust, and and don't tell me that we're always thinking when when if, if I'm looking at some beautiful woman uh, on on the screen. Pornography is a big problem, not only with men. It's become, uh, and it's, particularly it is with men, but also more and more with women. But it's because of what they see. Uh, and and it may lead to sin. And it's not by accident. If you look at verse 31 and you just look at it on your, Jesus, he says what he does um, uh, about, uh, uh, about adultery. And then the next thing he talks about is divorce in mm -hmm. verse 31. That's not by accident, saints. And, and remember, he said that the thing that we that, that we need to do is we need to deal with our sin. If I've got if 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 something is causing me to lust, maybe I don't need to be on the internet. <laughs> uh, uh, that if, if I'm going into the grocery store and it's right there in front of me all the time, a, a lot of these things uh, because they, they 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 sell sex, uh, um, they sell adultery. Uh, stories like that, um, and and what uh, it's better for me to enter into heaven, and and 
and, and what he's saying is deal with the sin. Remove that thing from your life. If I'm running around with somebody and all, and they're all the time telling foul jokes and, and what have you, and it's affected me negatively, then that may that may be a person that I do not need in my life. Uh, and and so Solomon in this fifth chapter, he's he continues to tell his son and point out to him. And when he uses the word prostitute, it's it's any kind of illicit sexual relationship. It doesn't have to be uh, a, a professional <laughs> prostitute, but it can be any relationship that I have. Some of us can have relationships with a person at work and, and we can become uh, involved with them, maybe not physically, but, uh, but emotionally, I'm so connected to that person. Uh, that is, uh, we have to be careful about that with, with the opposite uh, sex. Uh, because what Solomon goes on to say in this fifth chapter, uh, when you look at uh, uh, verse 16 uh, in that fifth chapter, Verse 15, he tells me not to drink water, for me to drink water. He's talking to his son, drink water from your own sister. You know what the, your own sister needs? It's your own wife. No, my. Drink water from your own well. That's mm -hmm. where I ought to get my satisfaction. And it, you know, the most dissatisfied people uh, when it comes to relationships is people that uh, make those tri triple X movies. They find it very difficult. And some of the reasons that we have been dissatisfied with our sex life, in our sex life, is because we, we slept around. And, and that other person is knocking at the door. <laughs> Solomon's talking about them knocking at the door. They're still knocking on the door mentally. And, and we have difficulty dealing with that situation. And it can, it can negatively affect our sex life. Well, saints... Uh, Let's let's look at let's look at Brother David as we look at Second uh, uh, Samuel the eleventh chapter verses one through five, and I'd like for somebody to read that, please. Mm, Brother Bill, it says, and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all to Israel. And they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Reba. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house and from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Is that through verse five? Through five, I'm sorry. I'll get it for you here. Yes, sir. 11, 3A. Uh, I'm sorry, there it is. Yeah, there it is, right there. And he said, it's not... Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her, where she was purified from her uncleanliness, and she returned into her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Hmm. All right. Let's walk mm -hmm. through this scripture together. Hmm. And you know what I love about the Bible and the reason that I know that the Bible is true is the way it's written. Mm -hmm. the, way, the way we like to write about ourselves, we're not going to tell those, we're not going to tell about the warts in our life, most of us. <laughs> Amen. And, and the Bible always deals with the warts in the lives of people. And not only David, look at Moses. Mm -hmm. Uh, John the Baptist doubted Jesus once. That, that, that's in the scripture uh, because he wanted to know if Jesus was the one. Yeah. Uh, any character in the Bible, the Bible deals with the, 
the, the issues in their life. And this is a man that the Bible says was a man after God's own heart. And, and, and God, he was God's man. He was a man after God's own heart. But he had some issues, like all of us right. have issues. Amen? Amen. There is sin is in our life. I like what the what, what the preacher said last week, Reverend Copeland, because he's right. There's there's some churches where they don't preach sin anymore. Wow. Uh, they, we, we like to we, we like to forget it, uh, to to eliminate it. But sin is sin, and God calls it what it is. And and, and so we have David here. Uh, and, and he's reminding us uh, about David uh, and, and helping us so that we can learn from David's life. And the first thing that we see here is that David is in the palace. Now, should he have been in the palace? <laughs> no, as, as a king, he shouldn't have been. Right. Where should he have been? He should have been going for battle. the battle. Amen. The first yeah. 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 Uh, because he had enemies, he had enemies that, and, and they needed to finish the battle, um, and and with Ammon, and and they were more successful with David than they were without David. Well, David got caught up in his ego and his pride, and he said, "Hey, I'm gonna stay home. I'm gonna let the boys take care of this." Um, There's a scripture uh, that we read a few weeks ago in Galatians. 5 and 16 when we were studying. And Galatians 5 and 16 says that if I walk in the spirit, mm. I'm not going to be subject to the sins of the flesh. Yeah. If I don't walk in the spirit, I can be subject to the sins of the flesh. And that's what happened with David here. David did not, he, he, uh, he was walking in his flesh. He was not walking according to what God said and what what he was supposed uh, to do, uh, and and so therefore he fell into a situation where he was uh, uh, was tempted, and it was it was late in the afternoon. He'd been sleeping, and he get he got insomnia, like I get insomnia from time to time. And so David <laughs> David got up and and, and, the, and and he was doing what he was walking around. Yeah, he, was, he was walking around on the rooftop of the palace. And when he was walking around, the word says that he saw someone. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, one of the things that I, I, I want you to notice is that it, it, this, this scripture is real direct, and it, I don't think it's is is dissing uh, Bathsheba, but it never never gave her name. It just said the woman, the woman. Uh, but mm -hmm. this is obviously uh, Bathsheba, as we learn in that in that twelfth chapter, uh, because David got caught up with what he saw. Now, look, something else I want you to look at in your Bible, um, and I want you to uh, underline it in in your text. In, in verse 11, I want you to underline in verse 2, he saw, he saw, look, underline these verbs. In verse 3, I want you to underline sent. <laughs> he sent for the woman. In verse 4, there's two, two that I want you to underline. I want you to underline took, and I want you to underline lay. David was full of lust. It was obvious <laughs> from what he saw. Amen. Amen. Hey, anybody, any, any of us, man or woman, can be tempted by a beautiful body. Amen. Hey, I'm telling you. Hey, yeah. uh, that's why. That's why these ladies, whenever they think of somebody, they think of Denzel. They, although Denzel getting like me, he's getting older <laughs> and don't look the same as he did. Uh, but that's a song that we used to sing all the time. And we don't hardly sing it anymore. I wonder why in the church. We'd have a youth prayer meeting, and somebody was going to strike up this song <laughs> nine times out of ten. Uh, because it was one that we knew. 
And see, I, I kind of forgot the words. I, I was searching around the house for the hymnal because I said, let me find this hymnal because these are good words. And, and the name of the song is Yield Not to Temptation. Mm. And, it, and I'm going to read some of the words. Yield not to temptation for yielding is sin. sin. Now, and I'll come back to that. Each victory will help you some mm. other to win. Mm. Fight, Fight manfully mm. onward. onward. Dark passions, subdue. Look ever to Jesus. Guess what? He He'll is. carry you through. <laughs> Ask the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Um, good words, and the other two verses that good words are also. But I want to, I want to take you back to the first phrase in that yield not to temptation when david saw that wasn't a sin right. amen mm -hmm. amen I, I know that uh, uh our wife might catch us looking at a real pretty woman going by and we look amen that's not the sin <laughs> uh, amen or or she can do the same thing all right uh that's not the sin. It's just sin. Because if you don't yield to the temptation, right. if it if it because what Jesus said is, is that if you lust in your what? In your heart. And when he's saying heart, he's talking about the mind. That's where the sin takes place. And that's what David did. David looked long and he looked hard. <laughs> it got to the point of lust where he said, yeah. I want that woman. I want that woman. Guess what did he do? What did he do? Sand for her. Amen. Now, he also had another opportunity. Because God will give you opportunities to remove that sin. Yeah. And, and what opportunity did David have? What's the second opportunity God he had to avoid the sin? Turn around and go back in there and get in the bed. Or go yeah, back you could have had that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, you were right about that. But, but it was something that was said to him. There was something that was said today. That it was Where Uriah's wife. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. I, we got delayed, Joel. I'm, I'm going to try to hurry along. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, but he, 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 the other thing that he could have done, he could have listened to them. Because Uriah was somebody. Would you go over to Second Samuel 23? It lists David's mighty men. Yeah. And one of the mighty men that's listed is Uriah. He had to know something about him. He certainly knew who Ahithophel was, which was which was her grandfather. Amen. It was her grandfather. And a couple of weeks ago when we talked about Ahithophel, remember he got hooked up with Absalom because he was David's advisor. Uh, he, and he was one of those mighty men. I, they believe that's why he probably went with Absalom is because Absalom was, uh, was, was uh, he was probably angry about how Bathsheba was treated and how he brought her into the situation. But anyway, David had an opportunity to turn and he did not. Uh, and uh, it, it's too bad that he didn't have somebody that was stronger with him. The Bible says, and uh, faithful are, are the wounds of a friend. I read something else in, in, in Proverbs, not Proverbs, Job 31, just part of my daily Bible reading this week. Job said he made a covenant with his eyes. There's certain things that he couldn't look at because he didn't want to offend God. And if we contrast David, we contrast David with Joseph because he found himself in a similar situation. Uh, uh, and, and he could have had the attitude that uh, hey, ain't nobody around here. <laughs> She's throwing herself on me. And I've heard Christian men say this. That, well, if a woman throws herself on you, that's her fault. It ain't yours. No, that's sin, saints. That, 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 that is sin. See, we, we try to twist things. We, we'll say, let, let, let me talk about what we say. We say we're having an affair. God <laughs> calls it adultery. Amen. Yeah. yeah, or he, or he, either he calls it fornication. Uh, we, we say that I'm in love. God says you're in lust. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we'll call it sex. I don't call it sexy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. We, we'll call it, we're just being romantic. And God is saying, that's going to lead to your ruin. And this led to David's ruin. It not only ruined him, but it, it, it affects, you know, we, we, it, it, uh, the song, Generation. me and Mrs. Jones. I, I have some exception to that song because my last <laughs> name is Jones. And I don't want nobody messing with with my wife. And and me and uh, 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 me and Mrs. Jones, it goes on to say we got a thing going on uh, that it's okay uh, uh, to do that, and it's not okay, Saints. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm going to close with this, and and I'm not going to read it. I had planned to read it, but I want you to read it on your own. Uh, and it's it's Psalm 51. Thank God that David did have somebody that confronted him. God sent Nathan. And he confronted Nathan, Nate, uh, David about his sin, and David repented. And his repentance is recorded in uh, uh, Psalm 51. Uh, and, and what he asked God to do is create in him a clean heart. Mm -hmm. uh, thank, thank God that he is a forgiving God. And, and that I, even though I may have committed this sin in my life, my God is full of mercy and he's full of grace. Now, God forgives sin, but he doesn't forgive consequences. Mm -hmm. And there can be consequences in my life as a result of that sin. But, mm -hmm. but God is a merciful God. That's why uh, today, uh, or every day, if we ought to, but normally on the first Sunday at the Lord's Supper, uh, we, we, we confess our sins to him. And the Bible says in 1 John 1 and 9, now I shouldn't rationalize that. I shouldn't go commit a sin and say, well, he's going to forgive me anyway. No, it, but yes, he will forgive. God will forgive. Uh, uh, but I need to go his way. Uh, and, and, what I, and, and Lord, help me. Help me not to yield to temptation, but to be obedient with your word. And Father, help me to remember, and this is, by way of a closing prayer, what I'm saying right now. Lord, help me to remember, it, it's not just the act, but it is with my mind. Uh, I, I can commit adultery in my heart because it's a heart matter. And it's, that's why I ask you, dear God, to create in me a clean heart because I need to be clean and I wanna be right before you. Thank you, saints. And let's close out big on our last three commandments. Uh, next week, as as we look at the uh, at, at the last three, we'll have we will have completed all ten. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
gracious God, heavenly yes, Father, yes, the great God, the great I am. Yes. Lord, we rejoice. We exalt your name because you are a holy God that is worthy of praise and honor. Yes, yes. And we have we always look forward to this hour, Lord, yes. so we can come together, Lord, because you told us to not forsake you. Together, Lord. And we're here on one accord that we might call upon your name. Lord, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. I love the second verse in that song, dear God. I love all the verses, but Lord, we have a sin problem. And that's why we're here, Lord, because we're chipper. That was only his job. Just like he was with David, that's the problem. And he sees us. We don't want to get caught up in ourselves and our own pride. But Heavenly Father, we want to draw near to you. Because if we draw near to you, your word says that the devil will flee from us. We need Lord. an evil world, Heavenly Father. It manifests itself in so many ways.
not, thou the tender mercy from me. O Lord, let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. For I am the innumerable evil that has passed me about. My iniquity shall take up on me, so that I am not able to look up. So good. 
praise the Lord. Give God another hand clap of praise. You've been better than good to me. Amen. Even in a cobra time. Better and make me want to go on and preach, but it's offering. <laughs> it's time for offering. Oh, that sounds good. It's time for our offering. Praise our giving determines what? Amen. Amen. Remember, supper, go to a private place and do what we learned in Sunday school. Repent. Amen and praise the Lord. Thank you, choir, for leading us in Zion songs and worship. What are we, church? What does that mean, church? What verse is that, church? Amen. His strength is made perfect in our weakness, and we continue to depend upon His power doing a time such as this. For he is able. Amen. Amen. One uh, for coming out last week and celebrating all that you did, all that you gave to celebrate 118 years of service here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage us to fast and pray on a.m. to 7 p.m. If you're carrying a heavy burden, a heavy load, you may want to do a 24-hour fast Friday 7 a.m. to Saturday 7 a.m. And we're fasting and praying until we make it through this covert time. Amen. Amen. We had a great time in Zoom Sunday School this morning. I want to encourage you guys, if you have a smartphone or a tablet or a computer, to join us uh, for Sunday School on Zoom. Uh, we had a wonderful time there. Uh, the Lord really taught us a lesson that I've heard some people say that they enjoyed it the most. They say it like this, I enjoyed this the most. I enjoy them all, but I enjoyed this the most. <laughs> so... Uh, God is really moving uh, in Zoom, so we want you to join Zoom Sunday. Study, amen. amen. Uh, a disciple is a learner. That's what a disciple is, and we have to be in places where we can learn to live up. Uh, Jesus Christ didn't say go make members. He said make disciples, and a disciple is a learner. You cannot be a Christian. And not be learning. Amen. Right. Amen. 
and praise the Lord. This morning, we're going to start a new series that I have entitled, Fear Not, Fear Not. Fear Not. All right. Fear Not. And we're standing on Joshua 9, uh, 1 and 9, uh, where God commands Joshua, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I think this message is needed for such a time as this. It's time for us to be strong and courageous. It's time for us to not be afraid uh, and to not be discouraged. Though there are a lot of discouraging things happening. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Fear not is the new series this morning we're going to talk about fear not the future fear not the future we're going to be looking at jeremiah 29 and 10 verse 14 and would you please stand in reverence to the word of god stand symbolically saying that i will stand on the word of god let's read this together out loud at the same time on three one two three talking about this morning fear not the future fear not the future we're going to talk on around three points as the holy spirit gives utterance we're going to talk about a time in a place point number one point number two a turnabout and a plan point number three a timing in a prayer and we want christians to know today that christians uh, should have because of God's plan for their lives. Christians should have no fear for the future because of God's plan for their life. We're going to look at this brief video uh, by Dr. Tony Evans, and then we'll get into the Word. having sound issues all morning so read the words if you can see them but basically dr evans was saying that many times in our lives we think about the things and the wrong choices that we made in our lives and think if we made the right choice our lives would be different and then he says, but God has a plan for us. Amen. Uh, talk about marrying out of God's will, traveling out of God's will. And think about all of the maybes. Right, maybe yeah. this and maybe that. Uh, you've been in it too long. Don't know how much longer it's going to take. You still have all kind of questions, but God. He says, I'll give you a future and I'll give you a hope. And he says to seek God. Seek him right. when you're confused or when you're tired. Seek him. He says that if you ask him about it, he's going to send you back to him. Seek him for God. 
has a plan. He says, we have a picture. Oh, but we don't have a plan. Mm. Well, and then he takes it back. Savior Jesus Christ. A wonderful, wonderful video about God's plan. And I'll put it in the sound a little later when I send that clip out later. But this morning, we're talking about fear not the future. And we say that because God is over both our future and our past. But as we're starting a new series on fear, I began to think about when I was younger, about how I liked to be frightened when I was younger. I used to love being frightened when I was younger. I used to look at movies and I was thinking about much more of uh, fear villains and was thinking that in my day and time that Mount Rushmore would have a man by the name of Michael, Freddie, and James. As I was coming up, these were the greatest fear villains. And then I began to think that it's like arguing over who's the best uh, basketball player, football player, usually it's probably determined by the error that you're exposed to. And then I began to think about, some would say on that Mount Rushmore of fear, you have to have Frankenstein up there and Dracula and the Wolfman. Yeah. Uh, because that was their error. Because it's... We love to be frightened, or when we were growing up, we love to be frightened. But I began to think when I grew up, I didn't like to be frightened anymore. I didn't like to be frightened anymore. And I thought about a movie I saw of a young man and a young uh, two young men under a table. One looked at the other and said, because either it was Jason, Freddie, or Michael was on the rampage, they looked and said, or he looked and said, what were you going to be when you grew up? Yeah. Yeah. Because they were in trouble. And it seems to be, oh, villains that... Oh, that don't live on the screen. In our times, we're facing some frightening things. If you if you tell the truth, we're we're facing. Some, and the biggest villain in in this scenario is not somebody that you can walk uh, out of the theater. It's uh, not somebody that you can put paws on or uh, turn off the TV. This this villain that we're facing. Oh in our culture and our society today is COVID-19. Hello, son. And it's something that is real. It's something that has become real. It seemed like, uh, oh, he was taking it lightly. Hello, somebody. He was around uh, a lot of folk uh, in his rallies. Uh, oh, and he was uh, in a lot of places where he he didn't seem to, oh, be concerned about it. Uh, all of America became concerned when they saw the presidential helicopter have to go, oh, to the hospital. Hello. Somebody. Oh, when it became real, it, it hit home. Man. The markets, they're concerned uh, about the first lady and, and their staff. Uh, and now we're hearing that some senators uh, have caught it. Uh, oh, to the point that they don't think that they have the votes to confirm. Hello, somebody. This, hello, somebody. Well, this thing has turned our world upside down. There are games uh, that have been canceled. Oh, two games uh, oh, have been canceled. And there's all kind of stuff that is happening. Of the frightening things uh, that are happening. Oh, ladies have had to give birth uh, by themselves. Uh, oh, loved ones.
ones have had to die by themselves. School systems have been closed down. Old jobs have been closed down. Oh, and just when we think, oh, we're over the curve, it seems like it reoccurs. We're living in scary times. We're living in scary times uh, because of the fire. Uh, I was on my prayer walk uh, last week uh, and I was, I was wondering what uh, am I smelling? I, I'm smelling uh, and, it and it turns out uh, I was smelling the smoke uh, from California that is blown all the way to Oklahoma. We're living in uh, frightful times uh, of Corona, frightful times uh, of fire. You look at the news. Uh, hurricanes. Hurricanes. We're living in frightful times. Hello, somebody. And to tell you the truth, somebody here today, oh, they wouldn't tell the face of it, but part of it, uh, they will tell you, oh, at the very least, uh, that they are concerned. Uh, oh, and they're concerned about the future. Oh, I, I remember quoting before 2020 hit somebody who said, oh, 2020, you better come in, sit down, and don't touch nothing. Hello, somebody. <laughs> 2020 has turned the whole world upside down. Oh, like a, oh, a menace little boy who wants to have his own way. It's turned world upside down. We're living in scary and frightful times. We enter into October. Oh, about October first. Oh, where folk like to go to. Oh, the, the the scary house, the haunted houses. Hello, somebody. And October is known for its fright. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. We're living in scary times. And God has sent me here this morning to let you know the future. Hello, somebody. Fear not the future. And let me get into this text. Oh, we come in a time in the text. And I've been saying that. Oh, this text sometimes is controversial to preach. Oh, because theologians. Oh, like to tell us doesn't apply to us uh, that we can't take uh, the promises in this text uh, and put it in our day and times. Uh, but I beg to differ. Oh, as long as I preach uh, this text in context, uh, we can apply some principles uh, in our day and times. Uh, oh, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to look at the text in context. We back it back up uh, to a time and a place uh, where God says uh, in his word that there's a time uh, and a place. Uh, he says this. Uh, oh, this is what the Lord says. Pleaded, oh, for Babylon, uh, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise uh, to bring you back uh, from this place. Uh, oh, the time uh, was 70 years. Uh, the place uh, was Babylon. Uh, what was happening in Babylon? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, the people of God uh, were sent uh, for punishment to a place uh, oh, called Babylon uh, because uh, of their disobedience. Uh, oh, uh, put them in a celestial timeout. Uh, oh, you know those timeouts. Uh, well, most of you don't know timeouts. Uh, that's what the new school parents do to little Johnny. They tell him to go sit over there, little Johnny, in the corner and think about it. You're in a timeout. Now, now that was not, you see, my mama didn't put me in time out. Oh, she took time out to whoop my behind and save some time. Hello, somebody. Oh, and that's what God did. Oh, he put him in a time out. He took some time out to whoop in their behinds uh, for 70 years. Uh, you want to be disobedient? Uh, I got something for you. I put you in uh, Babylon for 70 years uh, and whoop your behind for 70 years. Uh, the truth of the matter, I began to wonder if America is getting her behind whoop. 
all because of disobedience. If America is getting her behind whooped, all because in other civilizations, oh, they pressed the curve and it never came back. But we in America, oh, are suffering the worst. Even though we make 4% of the world, we all. Oh, I think it's over twenty percent of the world of the people who died died here in America. Right, right. Amen. Hello, somebody. And I think God has us uh, in a celestial timeout. Uh, oh, He put us uh, in this coronavirus. Uh, oh, to give us a celestial timeout to make time. Out, oh, to discipline us, to get us to see our wicked ways. Oh, but I've heard other Christians say it don't seem like America is listening. Oh, we just continue to die. Hello, somebody. Well, God, oh, knows how to way in the text. Oh, why do you think it was 70 years? Oh, because 70 years will get them to, oh, do what we were talking about at Sunday school. Oh, to face their sins, to repent. Hello, sir. Turn from their wicked ways. Somebody's listening at the sound of my voice. And you're where you are. You're in a time and you're in a place because you're disobedient to God. Oh, and that's what most folk when they share. 29 11 they don't share that part of it the time and the place they just go to the cake of it hello somebody oh, oh, right. hello somebody but God said at the end of that and I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place and the amazing thing is it's that oh there's somebody stuck in a celestial timeout and you begin to wonder whether God not whether or not God cares for you, whether God, whether or not God loves you, or oh, whether or not you've been forgotten. You've been in this thing like Dr. Evans said too long. You didn't make a wrong choice. Oh, you've been in it too long. And it seemed like that you are forgotten. And I'm so glad. Oh, that my God knows how to work all things together for his good because oh, we're called according to his purpose. Hello, somebody. In Jesus' name. And one of the ways God worked this thing out, this time and the place, is that it says in Second Chronicles thirty six and twenty one, uh, it says, uh, "So the Lord, so so the land, let its savage rest uh, all the days of the desolation until seventy years uh, were complete. Uh, I fulfilled uh, in fulfillment of the word of the Lord through Jeremiah." He said, I put you in a celestial timeout. And there's some folk that don't have no job. And they're in a celestial timeout. Oh, they're in a savage rest. And God has you. And he's punishing you. But yet, he's working that thing out together for your good. Oh, because anybody know anything about, oh, growing a crop. Oh, it's that the land needs some rest. As a matter of fact, they use they would have uh, uh, at least one year or oh, I think after seven for a, a year of rest where they could not uh, oh plan anything oh but this was uh, of rest uh, so God was uh, working this thing out uh, together for all oh, their own good uh, oh for when they came back uh, he was and they would be all oh, ready to be fruitful. Are you ready, Bethlehem, uh, to be fruitful? Oh, we might be uh, in Babylon. Uh, are you ready to be fruitful? Uh, are you being prepared? Uh, are you enjoying this seven days rest? Uh, oh, God uh, has not forgotten about you, Bethlehem. Uh, God says, uh, I have plans. You Bethlehem, God says, uh, you have not been forgotten. Uh, Bethlehem, God says, uh, to that. I haven't forgotten about you. God says, uh, oh, 
Lord needs for there to be a turnabout. And that turnabout depends upon you and what you do from this point in time. Do you want God's plan? Then you have to turn about. You have to repent for your sins. America, oh, do you want God to bless your nation? Then you have to repent and have a turnabout. Oh, like the president did with this culprit. He never would say, wear a mask. Hello, somebody. He would never say, wash your hands. He would never, but he had a turnabout. Oh, you caught uh, that would enable you to have uh, a turnabout uh, and a plan from the Lord. Uh, God says, uh, Bethlehem, it's time uh, for the turnabout uh, in Jesus' name. Yeah, Point number two, <laughs> the turnabout in the plan. And this is me. Now, these people was so bad that God had to take everything away from them and spread them. Hello, somebody. I remember Michael Ford preached a sermon, gathering as opposed to scattering. God, oh, scatter the nations. Hello, somebody. But God says, oh, I haven't forgotten about there's somebody that looks scattered in this place. There's somebody who feels shattered in this place. Oh, there's somebody who it's who everybody else upon the God in his sex had not given up on these folk, his people. Oh, he hadn't given up. And this is where we get the turnabout of the plan. And this is one of the most wonderful texts in the Bible. Yeah. All right. Hello, somebody. This is what God says. And, and remember, he's saying this not to uh, all those who uh, have not rebelled. Uh, and God is trying to reach uh, somebody in deep sin. Uh, he, he didn't say this. Uh, oh, to somebody who had everything right. Uh, he said this uh, to a people who had already been uh, disassociated. Uh, oh, and dispersed. Uh, God says, uh, oh, for I know the plans I have have for you the class the Lord uh, plans uh, to prosper you uh, and not harm you uh, to give you hope uh, in the future yes uh, God has plans uh, for people who mess up uh, God has plans uh, for people who fall down uh, God has plans uh, for people who are so bad uh, that they've been disassociated from their own family God has plans uh, from their own church uh, God has plans uh, oh from their own cities uh, God has plans uh, oh from their own states uh, God has plans Woo! God has plans. That's why Dr. Evans could say, oh, when we began to think that, oh, I'm married uh, outside of God's will and my life is over. Oh, I got into something that I didn't pray about uh, and my life uh, is over. Oh, I made, uh, oh, some bad financial state mistakes uh, and my life uh, is over. Oh, I didn't wear a mask, Mr. President. Oh, in my life, uh, it's over. God says, uh, oh, I have plans. Woo! I have plans. I, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. To prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope uh, in the future. I have plans uh, for you. I illustrated in this way on my GPS. Uh, oh, I can say that I want to go oh, to Oklahoma City. And it will tell me the direct way. Oh, but if I miss a turn uh, in a place in Oklahoma City that I'm going to, uh, my GPS doesn't say you ignorant. Hello, sir. Right. You can't follow instruction. I'm done with you and close out. Hello, somebody. <laughs> right. Now, what it does and gently does is recalculate. Hello, somebody. Yeah, Hello, some, you can miss another turn and it'll recalculate. Uh, you can run into traffic and it'll recalculate. Uh, oh, God says, uh, oh, I'm ready to recalculate some things uh, in Bethlehem. Uh, oh, uh, 
that have lived foul, but I'm ready, oh, to recalculate. There's some things that they've done wrong, but I'm ready to recalculate because I want you to get, oh, to my plans. I want you to get to my future. I want you to have some hope in a hopeless time. I want you to not fear in a fearful time. Recalculate in Jesus' name. Recalculate in Jesus' name. There's a turn about in a plan. Oh, Dr. Evan say you have a picture, but you don't have a plan. Oh, you may have a picture, but you don't have a plan. But I have the plans for you. Oh, and it's not time for you to give up now. It's not time for you to have no hope now. It's not time for you to be afraid now. It's time for you to repent in Jesus' name. It's time in Jesus' name. Then, folk have the nerve teaching this saying that this stuff we can't apply to us. God always has plans. Yeah, always. Everything he created had a plan to it. Amen. You may not know what it is, but everything plan for it. And the Brazilian forest, oh, that great forest, and to which they're chopping down, oh, they didn't realize that God had a plan for a forest. Don't you know that that forest is a filter and it filters out Oh, the deadly air uh, to which we talk about global warming. Uh, oh, if you leave what God planned uh, alone, uh, you wouldn't have global warming. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Ooh Everything has a plan. Uh, oh. Roach has a plan. Hello, somebody. That gecko has a plan. Uh, that rat has a plan. We know what that buzzard plan is. Uh, oh, because long before the city, oh, oh, would hire somebody to clean up. Uh, oh, road kill. Oh, God already has. Uh, his Oh, and that filter was a buzzer. That filter is a maggot. Hello, sir. Yes, even a maggot has a plan. How can you think that God doesn't have plans for you? God always have a plan. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. They say hey, there ain't nothing. You can have nothing on a woman with a plan. Hello, somebody. Mm. Always has a plan. Hello, somebody. And, 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 and five. As many, O oh Lord, my God, you have done the plans you have for us. Have for us the plans you have for us can to you uh, none uh, 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 plans you have for you uh, none can compare to you. If I would proclaim and declare of them, they are. Mine. Than I could number. God, He owns the purpose, uh, and that's why He saved you, Christian brother and Christian sister. He didn't save you for you to go out and live your life uh, or any kind of way. Uh, he saved you, oh, so that you could serve uh, in the household of the Lord. Uh, he saved to serve in the household of the Lord God always has a plan he's giving you gifts, talents and abilities and if you have that gift to sing then get you should be singing if you have that gift to preach guess what, then you should be preaching if you have that gift to teach then you should be teaching if you have that gift of hospitality then you should be hosting hell somebody. God always has a plan. Yes, sir. And he never gives up on you. Yeah. Woo -wee. Yeah. That's the amazing thing about yeah. this. Yeah. Is that God never gives up on a disobedient state. He's ready to recalculate. And that's a place that God wants to take Bethlehem. Are you ready to recalculate? Hello, son. God has a plan. This last point, at least I'll keep us here too long. The timing of prayer, the timing and prayer, the timing and prayer is this. This, this, is, ama this is amazing to me. You see, 
they were in that time and place. And it seemed like that time, at that time and place, God wouldn't listen to them. Ooh, let me say that again. Mm -hmm. They were in a time and a place, and in that time and place, it seemed like God wouldn't listen to them. But num number two says a timing in prayer. It's a great verse that everybody knows. We got to keep reading. He says, then you will what? Call on me and come and pray to me and what? And I will listen. Somebody at a place, a time and a place where God won't listen to they in a time and a place. Oh, and you seem like, oh, and think, oh, that God is, oh, far from you. God is far from you he's just not listening to you Ooh. have you ever been made your wife upset and, and she don't leave hell somebody she still stayed there but she's just not listening to you <laughs> she ignores you hello somebody you've been in that kind of place Amen. hello somebody Oh, it's just me. It's just me. Okay, okay. <laughs> there went a time and a place, uh, oh, where God wouldn't listen. Oh, but even when God wasn't listening to them, guess what? And God was just waiting for them to repent. Uh, God was waiting for them to turn. Uh, and also God was waiting for his own promises. Ooh. Let me say that again. He was waiting for them to repent. He was waiting for them to return. Oh, but he was also waiting for his own promises. He told them that they would have 70 years. And he waited. Oh, for that divine celestial timeout to end. Oh, and when they came back, they would be in full relationship with God. Have you ever noticed somebody who said they forgive you but won't? have an intimate relationship help somebody they say they forgave but they just hadn't forgotten help somebody and because they haven't forgotten guess what they may have never forgiven Ooh, but God is not like that help somebody God is not like that all you have to do is turn. All you have to do is stand on God's words. If he said 70 years, oh, on day one after the 70 years, guess what? It was time to pray. Oh, it was time to pray. And it's time to pray. I've been asking you oh, to fast and pray with me on Fridays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's time to pray. What if, oh, a dispensation has changed. What if God says, listening, but guess what now? Because I have a plan for you. I began to listen. Oh, I'll hear what you pray about. Oh, what would you pray if you know God heard? What would you pray if you felt this from the Lord? Hey. Hello, somebody. It's time into a prayer. And I'm going to say this and have to get up out of here says in Psalms 145, 19, he fulfills the desires of those who what? Fear him. He hears, saves them. Call to me and I will answer and show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Pray, church. If you haven't been praying, it's time to pray because we are living in scary times and it's a legitimate threat. But I'm so glad that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything or anything I can imagine. It's time to pray, church. It's time to pray. Oh, that God would set this place on fire and that folk 
will get saved. That even in a COVID time, God would show up. Show out uh, and rebuke uh, 2020 and make this the best year of this church life uh, because there is uh, a future. Hello, somebody. There is uh, what we learned last week hope uh, for our future. There is uh, hope for our future, and it's time uh, for us to believe it. Uh, for us to pray it, it's time to go into this revival that God has planned for our church. Even when we have not acknowledged Him, when we turned from Him, when we went left, instead of went right, God has recalculated and says, Bethlehem, I have plans for you. I have plans for you, my sister. Oh, Oh, my child, I have plans for you. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Right. No. I don't want you to get covert. But at the same time, I don't want you to be disobedient either. My time is up. All eyes closed, heads are bowed, saints are praying. Right now, there may be somebody in this sanctuary that needs to repent. And your Lord's Supper. And to go to a private place. Don't take it lightly. Don't take it too quickly. Examine your life. Examine your life. Confess any known sins. And not only confess it, but turn. Wednesday, I was talking about get rid of your Jonas. Jonah on that boat caused all kinds of drama and storms. And I talked about getting rid of that Jonah of a relationship. You know it's ungodly. Talked about that in Sunday school. God says honor marriage. You can't honor Honor marriage. Turn from adultery. Turn from fornication. Because those are your Jonas in your life. That's what's causing the drama. That's what's causing the storm. And alcohol and gambling. Because... That's what's causing the storm. Those who are alcoholic can be real good, nice people. But put alcohol in them. It causes a storm to rage and they end up in all kinds of trouble and mischief. It's time for us doing this, Lord. At our own private time. Confess any known sins. Not only confess, but turn. Get rid of your Jonas. Your prayers will be answered when you get right with me. You could be the key to flattening of the curve in America and this coronavirus and everything else that's going on. You could be the key because God said, if my people, he didn't say, if outside people, he, he didn't say if the, if the governor, unless the president and the governor are Christians, if my people, he was talking to his people, he was talking to us, called by my name, humble themselves and return from my wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive and heal their land. We want you to examine yourself when you leave this place. And lastly but not least, there's somebody here today we want to give an opportunity for you to give your life to Jesus Christ. You don't ever remember a time where you personally accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life now 
eternal damnation. God has plans for you. He wants to prosper you. He wants to save you. He, he doesn't want to harm you. God don't send anybody to hell. We send ourselves to hell. When we don't accept his son who says that I am the truth and the life, no man cometh to the Father but by me. Is there one here today who want to sip out of their seats and want to get right with God, wants to pray a simple prayer? Is there one today who could, in their own intimate time, pray and ask Jesus in their hearts as their Lord and Savior that you believe that Jesus died for your sins, that he was buried and raised again on the third day? Is there anyone willing to pray that prayer? Anyone willing to sip out of their seats right now to pray that prayer? Sip out of your seats right now. I'm, I'm over my time, but slip out of your seats right now. Is there one? Is there one that needs to pray that prayer? When you pray that prayer, you can surely fear not the future. Life. Is there one? Amen. And praise the Lord. Give God a hand clap of praise. Sorry, I went over. Would you please stand? I'm going to get you on up out of here. <laughs> Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord. We can fear not for the future. We thank you, Father, that this world is in your hands, in your control. Our jobs, our town, our families are all in your hands. Father God, I want to pray a special prayer for Sister loss of her nephew. We pray, Lord, that you would move in their family, Father. In Jesus' name, put your hedge, your protection around us. Keep us safe. We meet again, and the people of God said, Amen. Praise the Lord. You are dismissed. You are dismissed. You are dismissed. God bless you. It's good to see you today. God bless you.